So I've been discussing this concept of trends. Trends are a fundamental aspect of futures research. Of course, remember, it's not just making guesses about the future. It's not just making up stories. All of our scenarios that we generate need to be based on some sort of evidential trend. Some material that we can point to and say, if these things occur and we can see evidence for them to have occurred like this in the past, then this future may come about. So it's based upon data, but the data doesn't necessarily have to be numeric. It can be images, it can be wordles, it can be pictures, uh, it can be stories, um, it might be articles that you hear heard about. So as long as we can identify patterns, so around an educational technology, let's say ChatGTP, we may be able to see lots of discussions about how it's being used in the classroom. Now, no one may have yet gone and numerically analysed all of that and put it into some nice data tables that we can use, but we may be able to pick out various trends from the stories that are being used to describe the uses of that particular educational technology. Now, yes, if we have numerical data, it does make it easier, but we can also draw data from a range of other um, sources as well because there can be a range of different trends. So climate modelling is an example of a trend where we can see changes in climate over time. But we can also see changes in the size of microchips getting smaller and smaller, or the price of cars getting lower and lower. Um, well, at the moment, the price of houses is going up and up. These are all trends that we can sort of easily identify. But there are also trends that aren't necessarily as easy to quantify and see in numerical patterns. Fashion is a good example. There are clear trends in fashion, but you wouldn't necessarily be able to see some numerical trends in that respect. Um, there's also trends in design and other issues around that. And sometimes we can see trends in things like memes and when things go viral. Um, they simply just become popular for, for various reasons. But once that starts happening, we can sort of see certain things occurring and we can make predictions based upon that into the future. So have a look at the little video clip looking at some of the future possibilities that may occur in the near future and think about what would be the trends that are leading to these amazing future outcomes. What could we be looking at in the past that would have predicted these things to have occurred? Then have a look at some of the trend data I provided you. I've given you four graphs of numerical trend data around the speed of computers, um, the size of, of, um, of computer memory, or the, the power of com computer memory getting smaller and smaller, where in the past a hard disk used to be the size of a building, now it's the size of a, um, a fingernail. Um, the access to the internet that's been increasing and also our access to mobile communications. So four sets of numerical trends, and they've been nicely graphed for you to be able to look at in terms of um, their progression. And what we do with forecasting is we take those progressions, the pattern of change over time, and we um, extend that into the future and say, okay, in five years time, if that trend line continues as it has in the past, then we're going to see a certain change that we can incorporate into our predictions and our scenario writing. So that's how we utilize numerical trend data. So have a look at those trends and see if you can see some patterns in those and share that onto Teams. Now there are lots of different trends that can occur in relation to education and educational technologies. Now I've given you access to a technologies and trends timeline that's done out like a railway map. Now, the reason it's done in this way is to show the interconnectivity of various trends, that certain issues like the internet relate to certain other issues. Um, so look at those intersections and how various elements can intersect with one another. Part of that is learnt from doing things such as doing a futures wheel. But just consider the various possibilities. Of course, you're going to need to explore a range of possibilities in your future study. So just see if you can come up with some different um, ideas. Of course, the next step is for you to then look at data sources for these. 
where you can get some evidence of these trends. Now, one tool we're going to use is Google Trends, which allows us to look at um, the popularity of various search terms, which can give us an indication of whether or not a particular educational technology is on the rise in terms of interest or waning and diminishing in terms of interest. So we can utilize um, secondary data sources to make um, interpretations of that as to what may be occurring in relation to, in this case, educational technologies by looking at um, the search popularity of various technologies. So have a go at that and see what you can see in terms of the trends around some educational technologies based upon their search popularity and share that into Teams.